Welcome to Enchanted Rock. This is the most popular camping destination in the entire state of Texas. It's filled with stunning landscapes, incredible creatures, and it's named after that towering batholith that looms over the entire place. Now, there are countless awesome and incredible creatures that call this place home, but I'm looking for something different. I'm looking for the creatures that you might not normally see. The small, tiny animals that most people would completely miss, that live everywhere amongst this incredible landscape. I'm hoping to find and get in front of the camera some of these hidden secrets of this beautiful enchanted land. This is Vowenus Ventures. My name is Dan Vowenus. I'm a filmmaker, naturalist, and adventurer, and I've spent my whole life studying and working with wildlife, particularly reptiles. My mission, to explore exciting places, find fascinating creatures, and get them in front of the camera so that I can share the animals I love with the rest of the world. These are my adventures. Deep in central Texas lies one of its most striking landmarks, Enchanted Rock. This strange granite dome stands over 1,800 feet above sea level, and much like a stone iceberg, what we see on the surface is only a fraction of what lies underneath. The rock is a small part of a much larger underground formation called the Town Mountain Granite, a single, solid chunk of granite formed underground over a billion years ago that's larger than the island of Manhattan. This incredible geologic formation gives this area a unique and stunning landscape found nowhere else. If you look around the region surrounding Enchanted Rock, you'll notice just countless huge boulders everywhere just strewn about. And actually, all these boulders everywhere all came from the Enchanted Rock. They're all from the same single giant chunk of granite. As Enchanted Rock gets exposed, as it gets pushed up uh, and it gets exposed to the elements, heating, cooling, uh, the expansion and contraction of the rock, uh, water and wind eventually just weathers away until huge just slabs of granite, almost like, like layers of an onion, just start breaking off and start tumbling down the rock. It's what's called exfoliation, uh, kind of similar to your skin. And then those rocks, when they tumble down, they break up even more. Uh, then more wind and water and weathering and erosion set in until eventually you have these just huge rock formations built up. And sometimes they'll form crevices and cracks and little caves. And this is a particularly larger one. And this is literally just a massive crack in the rocks. Of course, that just provides ample habitat for incredible creatures. Deeper into this crevice, I find one such creature, the Black Witch Moth. Black witches get their name from various superstitions throughout Latin America, almost always involving the moths being a bad omen, forewarning death to any household they visit. While in reality, they're no more magical than any other insect, it is fitting to find a supposedly spiritual creature like this here at Enchanted Rock. The striking landscape surrounding Enchanted Rock has provided a home to the peoples of Texas for over 11,000 years. Over the millennia, countless legends and myths have risen about the rock. These range from tales of various spirits and ghosts, to stories of human sacrifice, to even being the home of a spectral giant roaming the rock each night and leaving massive footprints on its surface. Spanish explorers like Cabeza de Vaca even thought it was the hiding place of a lost city of gold, either Cibola or El Dorado. No matter what, the native inhabitants of this region believed that the mountain had spiritual or magical properties, leading to its name, the Enchanted Rock. Alright, down here, 
we have something that you might not notice unless you're looking for it. But they are an extra incredible tiny little creature. So down here, you look in this real loose soil, this almost sandy soil. There's a series of pits, small pits about an inch deep, about an inch and a half in diameter. Now these are the pits of what's called an antlion. Technically it's an antlion larva. Um, when antlions mature, they go through metamorphosis. Uh, they grow into a winged insect, uh, looks similar to a dragonfly or something like that. Um, but the, the larvae are very interesting. They're not just like a normal larva where it's like a little worm or a grub or something. These guys are small, have small round little bodies and a head with two huge pincers. You know, it looks like, you know, like a, like a fly trap, just big pincers. What they do is they dig a pit, a small little circular pit in loose soil where they know that there are ants around. And this basically acts as a pit trap, you know, sort of like, like the Sarlacc pit from Star Wars. So ants will come by and this soil is loose, it's shifty. They'll come to the edge of the pit and they'll tumble and they'll fall in and they can't get out. The soil's too, too loose for them to really get a grip and get out. And then they'll just fall and just get snatched by the jaws of the antlion where they can then eat at its leisure. So it's small, tiny, and unassuming, but this is a very devious, devious method of predation by these tiny, tiny little guys. <sighs> Incredible. Enchanted Rock is home to many fascinating insects. And of course, where there are insects, there are small animals that prey on them. If you look here, I am not going to move much at all. Um, we have a Texas fence lizard. Now, Texas fence lizards are part of a group that are called spiny lizards. They're called that because their skin is very rough. Each scale has a tiny little point to it, almost like a little spine. So they're very rough to the touch. Um, of course, these are called Texas fence lizards because out throughout the ranch lands and open range, uh, whenever people would put in fence posts, cedar fence posts, they would be all over there. They would climb up and they would spend a lot of time on the vertical fence posts and they'd blend in perfectly. Now these guys, are very, very jumpy and very, very fast. So I'm not gonna try and grab him or anything, but if I could grab him and I would show you his belly, they have the most shiny, beautiful blue bellies. You think I'm kidding, but I'm gonna put a picture up here. They're just absolutely beautiful. Now these guys, they like to climb up fence posts, but in nature, uh, they'll be on the shafts and bodies of trees um, in which they will hunt for ants, uh, gnats, other small insects, these guys are big insectivores. Let's see if I can kind of lean a little closer. Now this is not an adult. This is not a full size. They get... Oh, he's stuck in there a little bit. They get bigger than that. They get, you know, about that long, get real chunky in the belly. So he's a, he's a sub-adult, what I'd call him. But uh, it looks like he's starting to duck away. I got a little too close and... Some clouds are starting to cover up the sunlight, so I'm gonna uh, leave them to it. While this lizard was too skittish to let me get close, another animal wasn't as, well, squirrely. This is a rock squirrel, a member of the squirrel family that is actually more closely related to groundhogs and prairie dogs than it is to tree squirrels. In the Texas Hill Country, these squirrels take on a very distinctive black head or body coloration. They live in groups and dig complex burrows amongst rocky terrain, making Enchanted Rock a perfect home for them. As you can see, this squirrel is getting very close to me. In fact, it even approaches me of its own accord. This is something that's very unnatural to most wild squirrels, but is all too familiar to people who live in urban areas. It is in the nature of all squirrels to avoid large animals like humans, which is important for their safety. However, if they are regularly fed by humans, they can lose that fear and start intentionally approaching human activity. At best, this can result in an unhealthy diet and a disruption of their natural ecology. And at worst, 
it can cause the squirrel to get into dangerous situations and even get killed by human activity. It's crucial that whenever you are in natural areas, you always properly store and dispose of any food or trash, and you must never ever feed a wild animal. This is an important part of preserving the naturally balanced ecosystem that we are charged with maintaining. As I continue exploring the rocks, dusk soon falls. When the sun sets at certain times of year, the sunlight catches on pools of water on the rock surface. These reflections give the rock a glittering appearance, which is believed to be the inspiration for many of the legends and ghost stories of the area. Of course, it's only fitting that after nightfall, the more dangerous of Enchanted Rock's secret creatures come out to play. Alright, now, if you look right here, I almost didn't see it. Got a very small bark scorpion. It's right along the edge of this wall, this little rock wall here. Bark scorpions are very common throughout Texas, especially Central Texas. You can find them almost everywhere, uh, flipping over rotting logs and bark and debris. Uh, they're very flat. They can fit into a space almost the width of a quarter. They can just squeeze right in there and hide. And these guys are small invertebrate specialists. Pretty much anything smaller than them, they will grab and eat. Now, one sort of rule of thumb you can always tell with scorpions is the thinner the pincers, and the fatter the tail, the stronger the venom. Now this guy has very thin pincers, but he has a very thin tail also. So he does not have a sting that would be dangerous at all to a person. Um, this sting is, you know, it'll hurt, might ruin your day, but it's nothing to worry about. There's like, I think maybe one or two species in the US that are actually uh, medically significant to people, um, but they live like out in the middle of the desert out west. This guy's a little small. They do get bigger than this, um, but he is still, you know, I'd call him an adult. Uh, there's like an urban myth. People say the same thing about snakes as they do with scorpions. They say that the smaller it is, the more dangerous it is, because there's a myth that they can't control their venom uh, when they're young. That is 100% a myth. It's a myth in scorpions. It's a myth in snakes. Uh, all venomous animals are born knowing and fully capable of controlling their venom, uh, just as good as any adult. It's instinctual. Um, not only that, but they can replenish their venom as fast as you can replenish saliva. It just is naturally produced, so they can't just spend it all in, in one go. So, really what you need to remember is uh, the bigger the animal, the more dangerous it is, because that, that animal has more venom in its body to spend. Um, but of course with this guy, we have nothing to worry about. He is just another cool little creature out here at night. All right, let's get going. A very short ways away, I find another dangerous, more infamous arachnid. If you look right here underneath this little pr small little prickly pear, we have a very large, very healthy female black widow spider. Now the black widow spider gets a pretty bad rap but it's not entirely unearned. This is one of only two dangerous species of spider in all of the United States. Now, all spiders have some amount of venom, but almost all spiders, their venom barely affects humans. I mean, a tarantula, honestly, not as bad as a bee sting. Uh, the only spiders that really have any kind of serious bite is the black widow and the brown recluse. But that being said, compared to something like a, like a snake, like a rattlesnake, their bites really aren't that bad. Um, the only people who ever seem to have like, you know, life-threatening uh, reactions to their venom, aside from flukes and people who are allergic, are small children, uh, the elderly, maybe the immunocompromised. A healthy adult really has nothing to worry about from a black widow spider, except, you know, some nausea and maybe a trip to the hospital, but, you know, no one dies from black widows. Now, if you look, the web she's constructed that she's hanging on there, it's not your traditional disc web with the spokes and the little spirals that, you know, is kind of out in the open to catch things. What they do is they create a web that looks like a lot of just random chaotic strands going back and forth across a small little chasm. So that's an easy way to tell when you found yourself a widow's den. Of course, you know, 
probably one of the most famous things about them is their name, Black Widow. How they get that is very well known. Uh, the females are significantly larger than the males, and you know, almost nine times out of ten, uh, after they mate, the female will kill and eat her male. So that's how they kind of get that reputation of being, you know, man-killing ladies. Now you can see, black widows are pretty easy enough to identify. Um, they have the huge, bulbous black abdomen, those kind of tapered legs that start off relatively thick and then peter out to a real thin little narrow foot. And then of course, that iconic red hourglass. There are other species of widow spiders, most of which have a fairly potent bite. There is a cousin of theirs uh, that's in the widow family in Australia called the redback spider. That is very life-threatening. But we should have nothing to worry about from this beautiful girl. She has a pretty good spot here along the trail, so we are going to leave her to her evening. The next morning, I climb upwards, up the side of the rock to the summit. The trail involves climbing over a long series of boulders and rocks, making it physically demanding work. But the hardest part comes halfway up, past the tree line. Here the trek is just bare rock going up at a steep incline, making it very hard on the calves, and very easy to twist or sprain an ankle if you step wrong. You'd think that life would be scarce here. There's little plants, no water, no shelter, no places to hide, it's just barren. However, at the very top of the rock, there's a the most unexpected form of life, what is perhaps Enchanted Rock's greatest secret. After yet another incredible adventure, we're finally here at the summit of Enchanted Rock. This place looks like another planet. It feels like the surface of the moon, it's just bare stone. But up here, holds the ultimate secret of Enchanted Rock. And that's this. This looks like an ordinary crater or divot with some sand and gravel in there, but actually, this is an entire miniature ecosystem. During the rainier months of the year, these divots, which litter the entire surface of the rock, collect rainwater. It pools up and this gravel actually contains sediment, nutrients, microorganisms, and within that sediment are dehydrated eggs. This is what's called a vernal pool or a seasonal pool. And the entire thing is self-contained, self-sustaining, all right? Inside this sand are the eggs of fairy shrimp, tiny, tiny little shrimp that are capable of surviving in completely dry conditions during their egg stage. But when it rains, the pools fill up, it springs to life. The eggs come out, the shrimp come out, they feed on microbes, microorganisms that live in here, uh, and then in turn the microorganisms eat their waste. Uh, there's a plant in here, quillwort. Rock quillwort is a very, very rare species that most of the population in the entire world is found right here in Ira. So, there's no fish, there's no amphibians, there's no larger animals living in here, just these tiny, tiny organisms in this self-sustained circle living right here in this tiny little home. Well, I'd say this serves as the perfect capstone to another awesome adventure here exploring the incredible natural beauty and landscapes of Enchanted Rock and discovering firsthand its hidden secrets. And of course, as always, stay incredible. Man, it was really cool to see all those 
awesome, incredible, tiny creatures hiding out in this beautiful landscape, but... You know, tiny creatures are cool, but man, I really want to see something big now. Like something massive, like some truly great megafauna. But where would I go where I could see those? After. 